That's Bob. I ain't Bob. I'm one of her. Oh, well. We're on the internet. Oh, well, hey, folks. Uh, do you want me to read the obituary to you? Make sure you're not in there? No, they're on the solidnews.com. They're on the solidnews.com. Okay. Do you want me to read the obituary? No, I know well, you ain't yeah, dead yet. You know, uh, I just want to see if I even got an honorable mention. You will. Just hang on. <laughs> Be patient. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Well, folks, we want to welcome you to uh, the Follett, uh, news dot com and to uh, TV. TV and to Hillbilly TV and to Hillbilly dot TV. There's something like that. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's something somewhere there about. Well, hey, folks, welcome to the Ugg TV program of the week. Ten We're here to announce. And this is the program of the week for LTV. I got one of them free plugs here. It's about an elk banquet. What? An elk banquet? They're bouquet. Which well, is it? Well, have they cleared that with TWI? I don't know where you eat elk. I don't believe they serve elk at the elk banquet. I, I don't know whether they uh, cleared it with TWI or not. Let's see what that is, okay? Get a picture there on the internet. It says Elk Banquet. It's October the 13th. That's Saturday. The Bell Farm Event Center. That's where we went for that Republican. I think it says Ball Farm. Ball, the Ball Farm. Oh, isn't that where we went for that uh, Republican? No, but it's close enough. Close to it? I ain't sure, but that wasn't the yeah, ball farm. Was it? Maybe it was. I don't know. Right. But Bill, they're having a, a banquet. Bill Stanley is the one that's putting on the Elk Banquet. And... Uh, I don't know whether that's on or the elk that are up here at uh, the, uh, we're turning loose up here, what are we talking about, the elk uh, uh, club? No, it's the elk, they're going to raise some more money to fatten them up. Oh, really? Or something like that. I don't know exactly what it's for, but Bill Stanley at 865-414-3550. Yeah. Can give you information. 865 414 3550. Is it 5550? Five, 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 oh. I believe, I don't know, I guess it is 5550. Five, oh. Right. I can't write too good. That bill's kind of like Hawaiian 50. Oh. Yeah. 865 414 5550. And they'll give you the info about the elk bouquet. And that's going to be coming up this. Saturday night. At 5 p.m. Right. At the Ball Farm Event Center in La Folle. Right. We might have to go to the, uh, I mean, is that, you know, on Tuesday night down here at the Indiana Baptist Church, they give away free food. You think the hell give away free food? Not only if they have roadkill. A road kill. Yeah, road kill. Well, no, that fella up in uh, Kentucky would have him up at his restaurant. Well, you never you know. That, you? Yeah, I did. <laughs> Folks, welcome. We're glad to be with you tonight. You know, there's so many eventful things that are happening uh, that you have access to on uh, com or through other media uh, methods that, you know, it's just it's just real hard to comprehend everything that's uh, popping and happening. Not just here in La Folly, which is man a, a jigsaw. I mean, it's just a whirlwind here, you know. Uh, people moving out. Did you know that there, when you leave uh, my place and head down Jacksboro Pike, that there's about five real nice buildings vacant on the right? How I many's on the left? Huh? How many's on the left? Well, I just get ready to say, now there are some on the left that are vacant. And, uh, but we got a walking trail. Right, I know we walk. got a park. We're getting a new fountain. We got a library. Looks like a library. I don't know why we well, just need that for business. An incubator. Yeah, we got an incubator. You, you, you know, I turned in down there the day beside uh, the bank, uh, and uh, I almost got incubated when I made that turn. You wasn't going up into the, wasn't going up into some mill holler, was it? No, I wasn't going to call me a father, no, but I was going down and turning left in what's that subdivision? Weirwood. Weirwood, Weir, 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 yeah. 
Yeah, which is a good name coming up for October 31st. Oh, yeah? Yeah. He had we're whoops. So, uh, I guess they hadn't had it. We're wood. Yeah, well, boy, you're reaching on that, but okay, we're woods. <laughs> so, you, you people who live in Werewood, uh, you didn't know that that was the home of Werewood. Where do they get the name Toe Spring? What's that mean? Toe. Well, I believe it, 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 it's not T O W E. Uh, I don't know. I had a fellow work for me one time. His name was Spring Fella. Well, I was over in North Carolina one time and saw a road called Toe String Road. So evidently it means something I don't know about. This guy asked me one time, he was new here, he's a salesman, he was trying to sell me something. He asked me if they made rockets out there, and I said, we missiles out there. I said, what are you talking about? He said, saw that sign and said Toe String Road. And I just wondered if they made them, them toe, what do you call them, toe heads, them toe. What do you call them? That may be about no I, I had this big, uh, this three quarter, seventy three Ford four wheel drive truck, and had it loaded down with lumber. Yeah. And uh, there was a big, deep mud hole that I had to back through to get up to the house. We were, we were building a house for somebody, and uh, I just, I got stuck. It wouldn't go forward. It wouldn't go backwards. Well, about that time, nice some farmer came up the road. He had one of these big old dual wheel John Deere tractors, and it was four wheel drive on top of that. And he had a chain. Says he says, "Sonny, you want me to pull you out of there?" I said, "I sure would appreciate it." He hooked to it, and he didn't even run. He just eased it right on out. So my buddy had a little old Mazda B uh, 2000. We hooked a chain from the Mazda to my truck, and when everybody come back from Mars, they said, you didn't realize how powerful that little truck was. The truck was stuck when they left. <laughs> <laughs> I said, we just took this little Mazda to it, just eased it right out. Well, they talked for a long, long time, and we pulled it out without Mazda. It's like that guy that was working over at Oak Ridge, and he had a Volkswagen. This is back in the 70s, and he kept bragging about what kind of mileage he was getting, and these guys were sleeping out there on uh, lunch break and pouring a little gas in it, you know. He'd come back the next day, I'm getting 18, I'm getting 20, I'm getting 37, I'm getting 40 miles a gallon. And they kept putting a little gas in there, you know. Finally, guys, he had more than he had when he started. And he got tired. <laughs> if he'd been real smart, he'd have hired quicker and let him, I mean, you know, just, just kept on to talking about what great mileage he got, and he would have had bought more gas. Right. Back then, guys are just 32 cents a gallon. <laughs> he used to afford to add something, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> that might be a little bit difficult now. It's about like the fellow that pulled into town. He's way out in the Midwest somewhere, and his uh, old Volkswagen limped into town, and he pulled up this service station. And he says, uh, Who around here works on Volkswagen? The fellow says, Everybody's got one. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a number of those old Volkswagen. I had a little 56 convertible that would run an honest 50 mile an hour if the top was up. Downhill. And you put the top down, it would not get over about 41, 42 miles per hour. So we went down to uh, Darlington, South Carolina, to the uh, racetrack. Huh? To the racetrack? To the racetrack. We went to the Darlington Race, you know, and that little uh, Volkswagen suburban one. That's when they had the Firecracker 500 on the 4th of July, which they discontinued that race. But they had the Firecracker 500, and there must have been 35 or 40,000 drunk, screaming fans at that racetrack. And uh, we I mean, to, to have that you got there. We, <laughs> well, it's got one extra. 40,000 more. One more. So we drove a little boat flagging down there, and it was a beautiful day, and we had the top down. No problem going down there. Well, the race was not all that, that eventful, and since we weren't going to be able to make but either 50 or 42 miles an hour going home, it was about like over 100 miles home, we decided we'd leave early and get out of there. We did. But then about 20,000 of those people also left behind us. And here, <laughs> here they all were, all revved up from watching that race and drunk. 
having to follow behind, it was just a two-lane road, having to follow behind that boat wagon making 42 mile an hour uh, going out of Darlington, South Carolina. Now you talking about some mad people behind us. There were some mad people following us. Yeah. So that I'm tell you my little story, story about point. my 56 red a Volkswagen convertible with a black top. And I drove it for a long mean? time and uh, uh, it, it broke down on me and we put a tow dolly, put, put a tow bar on it. Back then you had tow, tow bars, you didn't have tow dolly. And uh, I was going up the road and the only thing I was hit to was the bumper. <laughs> the bumper had come up completely off of that Volkswagen and I was towing the bumper, the bumper up the road. And the boat was about a half a mile back behind me. So I, I had to go back and reattach the bumper, bolt the bumper on so I could pull it home. I'm glad I didn't run around you. <laughs> My life had really been eventful. Don't ever, uh, when, when I leave this world, don't ever cry for me. I've had one of the greatest lives that anybody could ever ask for. I, <laughs> I have uh, I really enjoyed my life. I had good family, good friends, even had good enemies. <laughs> you got plenty of them. They're <laughs> good, too. <laughs> Some of them are better than others. Uh, Digger, if you want to call us and tell us about the Shrine Circus, please do so. In yeah. the meantime, we'll tell people about Digger, right. who happens to be in the propane business. And this is an opportune time of the year to be in the propane business. Right. He's down there in the middle of the road, sawmill holler, 562-5444. Did propane you know his prices all. have not gone up? I don't care if gasoline prices have gone up. His propane prices have not gone up since last year. That's right. And you can't beat that. He got propane. You know, and all items to go with Well, send him out to California. You know, they got so many different grades of gasoline. His little propane business would fit right in there because he can, he can, if a Volkswagen pulls up, he can give him a Volkswagen blend of propane gas. Mm -hmm. or, or if a Buick pulls up, he can give him a Buick uh, blend of uh, propane uh, fuel. So he can just take care of it just very, very easy. Especially now that there's not as many different kinds of General Motors products as there used to be. Right. They've eliminated right. a lot of them. Right, yeah. You that. But uh, you need to go see Digger. Uh, I've, people, are going, people are going to propane a little bit more. I've sold uh, four or five propane tanks in the past two weeks. Uh, Elizabeth sold my 40 gallon, but not 40 pound, but I didn't. Really wanted to sell it, but whoever got it, I don't know. You bought it, and I'm glad you got it. It was a good time. And did it have propane in it? No, I just stole the time. I just wondered. Ugh, TV. Hey. Gentlemen? Yes, sir. Hey, uh, Ed Bowman here. Hey, Ed. Hey, Ed. Hey,
school budget and put this money in. But here's where the catch of the thing is. This money goes into the general fund. Okay? Now, once it goes into the general fund, then the county commission decides where it goes to. They're not, they can tell you that it's going to go to the road department, which I'm sure that a good part of it will to begin with. But let's say the next time the budget comes up and they go to set the budget, there's no guarantee whatsoever in this thing that the road department will continue to get <clears throat> that amount. And there was one, what I consider to be a true statement in this thing, and that's what Mr. Potter stated, that he would put it to that use, providing it got to him. But mm -hmm. the word it's going to get screwed around with is whenever, uh, uh, what is it, stage 57 of the money hole park or whatever or anything else or the discretionary fund or the county commission needs to go to Washington to see how a certain... Kind of like the city, not slowly evaporating hospital money. Pardon? Kind of like the city up here where that's our hospital money. Is that what was it? Is that over nine million? Yeah, slowly evaporating. Well, right. there was twelve billion in that to begin with. Well, it's called, you know, they charge you for keeping your money. Now, that's we a can't good afford question. to rent on it much longer. The people who are on that committee, and we're changing subjects here, but the people who manage this, do they get paid to be on this committee and manage this this money? I don't know how that works. No, I don't think so. I don't know, but they're not the ones that spending it. Well. Here's, here's, uh, we're, we're, everything's awful quiet about this, and we weren't, we were misled, deceived, and flat out lied to to a certain no. extent <clears throat> before when this thing came on the ballot, and there's not hardly anything whatsoever that's changed about this thing other than the fact of the way that they're going to shuffle the numbers, so. Well, if, you, they, they put this thing to the people that you're going to have to come up with the money one way or the other, either real estate tax or sales tax. Well, that's not true. The simple solution is if Jeff Marlowe would cut about six people out of his uh, office, that their salary would more than make up what we need, what the road department's going to get uh, uh, from this uh, sales tax increase. Well, what we, we're, the only way that we're going to ever get government under control is we're going to have to change the rules. We're going to have to change it to where that the county commission and the state don't set all the rules for us, that we're allowed to set some of the rules for ourselves. Now, whenever they put this thing on the ballot, or before they put it in, or before they do anything to ever get a citizen to even look at this thing, I believe, is they're going to have to get a financial oversight committee. And if we don't get a committee of some good... We need some people can count. Well, that's what I'm talking about, some conservative people to look at this thing. I saw there the other day where that they they run this emergency thing through something to do with a heating system. And I also see where they're going to spend somewhere near $100,000, I believe. It's somewhere close to that to put a floor in the uh, school at Jacksboro Elementary, I believe, or middle school, one to them, because they've got a hump in the floor. I know you went to school for a long time in an old school, and I don't ever remember there being a hump in the floor. This has something to do with engineering or moisture or whatever. But if the floor bucks up, you could go in there. You don't have to take the entire floor out. You could split that thing. You could put it back down. You might have a mark. But uh, whoever put this thing in did you not know, allow for expansion. You know... Anytime the government does something, they pretend like it's going to last for 400 years. And if they happen to get something built good, they tear it down like they've done in the Father High School gym. I was amazed. I hadn't been up there in a long time. But back in, the, and it's been there a long time, I'll give you that, but back in the 70s, we built a tourist welcome center up at Jellico. We put a stainless steel roof on that building. A stainless steel roof will last 300 years. The only problem is it's tore down and rebuilt with shingles now. Well, you can build a structure with that requires minimum maintenance. 
Mm -hmm. They would last for hundreds and hundreds of years. Well, if you build one that's going to last that long, they'll find something to just tear it down anyway. Tear it down because well, it don't look like it's supposed to look. It looks like a library. Right. Okay, what about, the, if we're talking about these subjects, if you go back to that fountain, I had no... I'm still worried about the clock. Well, uh, is the clock still there? Is it? No, it's gone well, too. Well, you know one thing they you know they haven't figured on. They got what fifteen thousand dollars for yeah. the fountain, but they they forgot that they're gonna have to uh, put a uh, warmer on that water because if they don't, Mary's gonna have to bathe in cold water. And another thing, they're gonna have to have a soap skimmer because <laughs> if they get it done for Halloween, it'll have bubbles in it. Right. Well. Uh, the uh, well, I don't know. This is not a. I don't know how to put this politically correct, but I heard I hear all kinds of reasons as to why we took the fountain down. Which myself, I'm a driver, and I don't never have time to look anyhow. If it ain't on that white line, I don't see it. Uh, but coming back to this thing, the whoever said that this thing was practically maintenance free. I've never seen anything that defies gravity electrically and pumps water up that's that maintenance free. And if uh, I'm not mistaken, I heard the complaint uh, that uh, uh, birth control apparatuses were being found in the other one. And uh, I believe it was the water had become salty, <laughs> if you know what I mean. You know, another example of the, you know, of a waste, and you can just cite one after another examples of waste that government uh, uh, has. Who would have thought that you'd find a chastity belt in a fountain? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, okay. uh, another example is, down. you know, when you turn in down there, we were talking about Weirwood a while ago, when you turn in down that Weirwood, they have spent with all of the empty government buildings we have, close to $3,000 a month to rent uh, space for our incubator program. We've got an incubator. And uh, I, when I turned in there at Weirwood today, I had to go down there on some business. I was afraid they were going to run out there and grab me and incubate me. Well, this is your chastity belt. Yeah. This thing is just another, what you would call, I guess, something to do with money. It, it's a... Uh, the people are not being realistic. We're not living in a real world. We want, we hear what we want to hear, and we always want to, things to go the best. And it's seldom that it ever does. Uh, but anyhow, gentlemen, there's a, there's several things we could discuss. That incubator, I don't hear very much being said about it at this point in time. Uh, but just like taking the fountain down, what's the point of taking something down and putting something up when? I don't understand it whatsoever. In my opinion, if they want to put in a waterfall, a fountain, or anything they want to put in there, take donations for it. Let the people who are interested in it and want it pay for it. Don't saddle some widow woman out here trying to buy a loaf of bread with the cost of putting this thing in and taking care of it. And my understanding, the way I see it, any time a politician does a trick like this, it's something for him to get some recognition and go out there sometime and get his picture took in front of him. And that's not right. Cutting them ribbons. Cutting them ribbons. But uh, if, why don't they do that? And that way, if, if the citizens, if people want to donate the money, that would show you how much interest there is in such. Well, you know, when go you ahead. start taking people's money for frivolous stuff, You've done got on the wrong side of the idea of government, in my opinion. I agree with that 100%. Well, now, it, it won't be long that the city's going to be coming back and saying, hey, we need a little revenue here for something. We need some money for something. You remember when they raised our taxes, whatever, it's to take coming. care of the bridges and whatever. They will so. completely ignore that there are 67% tax increase they recently had. They have found a way to spend all that they spend and start it, drawing on reserves. And they spend it faster than it's coming yeah, in. Yeah, and they're putting in fountains and libraries, making libraries look like libraries. libraries look like libraries. And, and uh, whatever happened to the, what are they called by the, the park, the, the arena?
Green. Now, what do they call them things where you stand? Oh, yeah, the uh, thing for the outdoor drama stuff. Uh, yeah. What do they call that thing? Right. Remember where you sit up on the hill and watch them down yonder? Amphitheater. Yeah, they're my amphitheater. Yeah. Well, that, that, whatever happened to that? It hadn't gone away. I they're just know. waiting. It, it's all how to spend yeah. money. You know, if you get other calls, or I'll, I'll give this thing up. I, I'm more than happy to surrender my time to uh, <laughs> the others. You've been known so, to do that. When you go back to the other administration or two or whatever, everything was the key of spending money. And you know the street that went, that goes by the Presbyterian Church, it crosses and comes from Beach to Central. It goes by the West Lafayette uh, High School, or school there. Mm -hmm. They had a proposal, and they was trying every way in the world to take that street out. I mean that that I mean they was, it was in the works, and they ran into a, a problem with the ownership of it. But they did, they had dead seriously was going to take that street out. And it was something about so that you could uh, walk from the park up to the ballpark or so the police department could see up through it or some you, you name it, just some kind of a dumb whatever. But anyhow, gentlemen, I appreciate your time. And if your listeners out there want to think about this, this tax thing, there ain't nothing changed about it. The only thing is whenever you vote it in, you can't complain about it because can, they can say, hey, you asked for it, you got it. And they're talking about They'll throw this thing in that uh, all these tourists is the ones going to be paying all this. Yeah. Now, that is crap. They're going to uh, be so busy carrying mattresses. They ain't got time for right, it. Yeah. Well, you take a look at the citizens. The local citizens here go to the store every day. They buy gas every day. And on a day like today, and I don't believe I saw an out-of-state tag today in my travels. I'm sure there was some. But we are the ones that live here every day, and we're the ones that's going to pay this. And if we don't get something set in place somewhere to where that we start cutting this spending, and there's all sorts of things that we can do away with that we don't really need, and whenever you go to paying government to do something, I'll guarantee you private enterprise can do it for half the cost government does. Always. And that's where we're at right now. Anyhow, gentlemen, I appreciate your time. Right. And we'll Do you if, appreciate you. I hope your some of the other listeners right. will bring us up and discuss it. You're the only one ever listened to this. <laughs> uh, there, yeah, I've heard that. But gentlemen, yeah. I'd like for somebody to call in and give us a good reason as to why that we need more tax without we do some cutting on some spending. Okay. And I'm not I'm not putting Mr. Potter down. I, I I honestly believe that Mr. Potter would put whatever revenues he gets to good use. I don't think he would if if the rest of the county I'll give right. him as an example. We'd be a whole lot better off. Gentlemen, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, yeah. you. Give somebody an opportunity to say something. Hey, TV. Hey, fellas. How you doing this evening? Doing great. Yeah, I was uh, I was listening there to the other caller. He's got some good points. Uh, to start with, uh, the government, you know, it, it, it's, it's not when you need to uh, correct these issues. The government's not going to let you correct these issues because they have all the main power because the American people have laid down and let the government run them. Until the people get their head out of their butts, there's not one out of ten that can fight the government. <laughs> yeah, that's but right. It's have <laughs> ten for ten to go up against the government to start with. And, and until the American people decide that they're going to grow kahunas or whatever they need to uh, to go out here and stand up against the government, it's not going to change. It, it, if you if you do some research back, that's just like our uh, that's just like our government. Every time we get in one of these big old, uh, I guess they, uh, well, I lost track of, of what I was. Whenever you they get in a big urge to make a change. It falls flat on its face because somebody will sell out on you. Right. That, but now, if you if you think about uh, these recessions that we're in, now you look at your you look at your government. If you research back as far as you can, as far as you can go, to uh, to look at it, every time a recession has been here, they've had to start a war to try to stimulate the economy. Well, all it does is just cost more, and people wonder how. We got in such a 18 trillion, and they can give you that 18 trillion number all they want. That 18 trillion is, is just a, that's just a fantasy. It's more in debt than that, I'm sure. Well, 
but right the, up, it's uh, the government is spending right more now. on wars to try to stimulate the uh, the economy back. And uh, it, it's happening in the cities, just like where I live. I live down here in Jokesboro because uh, it's run by a bunch of clowns. But you don't have any property tax. Uh, well, actually, uh, the property tax here, they, our, our city council on them, they do not want to implement any kind of taxes to help the city. They want the county to do it for them. And it's what that sales tax thing's coming up with. You know, our, our fine vice, the vice mayor and mayor and our city council people here, they stand behind. We won't put any taxes on our city people here. We're not going to put more of a load on them. Well, what they're going to do, they're just going to wait around and let the county do it for them. So they all looking good at election time, just like our little mud hole of a park down here. They put in down here at Jacksboro here. Uh, it's, I mean, you know, it's just ridiculous. They had the money for three years where they sit on it. Well, I don't know why they sit on the money, but what they didn't realize that labor, material, and everything else has went up 18%. Where did they put a park? It, uh, it used to be uh, called Nelson's Trail, or not Nelson's Trail Park, but the Trail Park down here right below the uh, the uh, the big police station building they, they bought and put the uh, the street department and the police station yeah. in it. It's, uh, there used to be a trailer park uh -huh. uh, there years ago, and they, they cleaned all that up, and it's, uh, they've, had, they've had the grant for three years, and they had to match that grant that they got, but they chose to sit on that money why I do not know, but they sit on it for all these years, and if they if they put it in some kind of uh, CD or something to try to draw interest, all they done was cost the citizens money because by the time they decided they wanted to use that, and it wouldn't have got used probably at this point unless the election was coming up or by it and got on their bus about why they hadn't got the park done, uh, we'd still be wondering why the money hadn't been used. But in, in the meantime, everything has went up. Their labor's went up. Mm -hmm. Labor has went up 6% each year. Materials have went up from 6 to 9% each year. Put all that stuff together, and if you're getting, a, if you're getting interest at 2.5 or 2.6 or 2.9, it won't overcome how much your labor and your material, all the government stuff do this. Why? I have no idea. I guess they just want to spend more money in three years or five years or next year. Next election time. Well, that, that's true, and that's I guess that's what they're banking on to be uh, reelected here, but I, I hope they sure don't count on that being their ace in the hole because these people, man, they, they, they've been in here the same city council for Jacksonville's been there for eight years. This is their eighth year with the, the same ones up there, and this town is nothing but crisp. It's just progress straight in the dumper. Well, I have to say, there. I don't it's know much about Jacksboro politics. I guess I'm better off. I think it gives me people mad at me if I don't say anything. Like I said, really but now, just like the gentleman was talking about before, you know, the it's, uh, if you don't come together as, as a whole, you can't do anything with the government. Because if, if you don't go full on against them, they're not going to do anything because they have all the control. That's right. And if if people try to come together and and take a stand against them, they're going to break this up. They're going to call it a cult, or they're going to call it a, uh, a, a white supremacy group, or they're going to call it they're going to call it something. The government is going to call this something to uh, to knock the people down that's trying to stand up and make government better, but they won't let them. You just don't give up. But I'll, uh, I'll get off here and let you go, but uh, I just figured I'd throw my two cents worth in. But, uh, you know, if you get time, look back at all the wars and all the recession times. The dates coincide, and, and the government will spend more by starting a war. It costs life. It costs mischief. Well, you billions. know, all, war, all wars are started by government. For trillions in debt. Well, they were trying to stimulate the, uh, the uh, economy by... Starting wars, they figure starting wars is going to uh, to uh, bring our economy back. It's going to keep the people working. Yeah, well, it might keep them working, but all along, they're just going more and more in debt. They're not getting anything actually structurally settled. It's it just they just leave it all in shambles. Then they got to spend 
trillions over there replacing all these buildings and stuff they blow up for these people. You know, it, it, it's no end. And it's time that the people got to get together and stop it. I mean, you know, until the people of the United States stand up, they, if they don't unite, you might as well forget it because the government's always going to have the stronghold. That's it. And uh, there's, no, there's no fighting it if you don't band together. People go down here at this courthouse and band together when they took out the First Amendment right. It wouldn't happen. Yeah, but you know, there's always it's hard to get together crowds against and do anything. They're afraid they don't want to stand out because they're afraid of what might happen to them. Uh, nobody wants to be in the head of the crowd when they're when they're fighting the government because there's too many ways they can get back at you. That the the Thank pure tactic. Thank I'm you for living calling, it, sir. I'm living example of that. Yeah, Ricky, you are. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one, guys. Thank hey, you. Yeah. Hey, uh, JV. Hazel Valley here. Hey, Hazel. Hey, I'm going to have to differ with these past callers now. We need more property tax. We need more property tax. We need more sales tax. We need more wheel tax. We need to raise taxes. We need to move more dirt around out there at White And we need to find more people. We, need, need we to can use two or three more jails. Right. Yeah, uh, we need two or three Marlo, more. Yeah, we Marlo need, need needs, a couple more jail houses. Marlo needs five or six more helpers down there in his office. And I'll tell you what, with a man like William Beard to run this, that money will be so well spent. <laughs> Let me tell you why. This guy came over from Oak Ridge. You know, we need more money for incubator programs. You know, they can't come up with new programs. We have an incubator meeting, and they have three programs that were started years ago. Yeah. Which they had nothing to do with starting, but the guy from Oak Ridge, who's also supported by incubator money, we need more money for him, come up there and spoke, and he said, William Beard is the smartest, uh, most intelligent, successful businessman in Campbell County. Now, I think you said one thing wrong. He's the smartest, most intelligent politician in Campbell County. No, businessman. No, and he was the wrong. most successful businessman. Okay. Here's a businessman. Well, his business is politics. Right. This man has never owned a business. He's never worked for a business. He's never run a business. He couldn't get up his pants now, on he was his a, mother. He was an agriculture extension agent. Was he? But there he is. There he is being praised as the greatest, smartest, most intelligent, successful businessman in the Campbell County. Where if he I mean, the Harvard Law, law Review? I got here for somebody else. Kind of intelligence <laughs> in this kind of propaganda. <coughs> <laughs> I mean, so, folks, <laughs> this sales tax can't be enough. We need that. We need more. <laughs> well, I think we ought to tax property at 100 percent. That tickled me about the incubator. Had a big meeting down there to come up with new ideas about business. Did we hear a single new idea? Was there a single person down there with a new idea? No, they brought three old businesses in there that... Uh, they gave them 20 minutes each to advertise their business. And and uh, these were three businesses that were started years ago and were standing on their own two feet without any incubators. They needed help. some incubators. I'll tell you what, folks. These grants that fund these things is another method of redistributing the wealth of America. You know, uh, a lot of entitlements is go more towards the lower income people and the older and the elderly and the infirm. But these grants is to funnel your tax dollars out of your treasuries, your county, city, state, federal treasuries, into banks and businesses and, and, and people that they pick, uh, like Obama's so good at, picking losers. And we got to support our losers, our, our our great businessmen, we got to move more dirt around out of White Bridge. we got to really, you know, really get in there and pitch in, folks. We need to give these government people more and more of our money. I don't see why we don't just put it on the ballot to give them 100% of everything we are. Well, you know, the only bad thing about this redistribution of wealth 
is that you can't do it for one dime. Because once you take all the wealth away from people, they ain't going to accumulate anymore, so you can't do it for one time. Well, we need to just go ahead and give government 100% of everything we got, because they keep getting more and more and more all the time. It's never enough. Yeah, the sleep's true. We need to give them 100%, like they did in Russia in 1917, and then we can pretend to work, and they can pretend to pay us. I think we ought to replace uh, the elections with tar and feathering. Hey, I'm for bringing back the guillotine. You know, and don't don't wash it off. Leave the old stuff on there. <laughs> well, they ain't gonna catch nothing that'll hurt them. <laughs> <laughs> you, <ready? laughs> you guys got a great show. I loved your last two callers. They were real intelligent people. They're not stupid, crazy like I am. That's what I know. They are real intelligent, uh, good thinking men, and and what they say is what the people of this county should really listen to. And uh, you guys got a great show. Keep it up. Thank we you. appreciate you. Okay, man. Five six 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 nine nine. If you've got any stuff towards you right. want to get rid of, and Bob got hey, some. Hey, I Rex. got some for you, Rex. If you want to come down, or maybe if I get time, I can drop them by there to you. But I've got a couple of bags of stuff toys for you. Ditch concrete, hardest concrete known to man. I guarantee, you drive on their side of the road, and they deliver what they say they're going to deliver. When they're going to be right on the ball. Them. They're not going to short you one bit, and they're going to bring you exactly what you ordered. And you can't, you can't depend on that just anywhere nowadays. Ditch concrete, home the hardest concrete known to man. Right. Oh, by the way, did I mention that they have got septic systems? They do tanks and everything. Right. Ugg TV. Ugg TV. Hello, Ugg TV. Hey. Hello, Ugg. Hey, Ugg Buer. Pretty good. How are you? Uh, Barrett Midland. Barrett Midland. Uh, enjoying your show like always. We well, appreciate that. Got poor taste, but we appreciate your time. <laughs> we ain't you ain't got nothing better to do. <laughs> <laughs> What's better to do than watch you all? I can't think of anything I'd rather do than watch us all. <laughs> Me either. <laughs> You're better best best some T V than any of them old stupid uh, uh sitcoms. Oh yeah, we're better than soap operas too. Right. Oh yeah. Uh, we, I bet you days come, of our lives. You know, I bet you the we good, come, the bad, the, no, it's the old and the reckless. I, I bet them. if we come home in the afternoon, uh -huh. then we and Bill go home and watch us and tell us so about it. Old and the reckless have just not got a home place yet. We're working on it. <laughs> uh, I was wondering if you cared about put the parade for, for back on again. Is what? The Veterans Day Parade. Uh, what about it? Ain't we done had that? No, oh, wait a minute. Veterans Day. That's November. Tell us about it. Yeah, we, uh, me and uh, Fritz Gillen, uh, we're starting this annually, uh, uh, Veterans Day Parade. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, we had one last year and yep. put one annual with it. And we've got a pretty good lineup so far. We've got some military vehicles in it and uh, some troops. And, got any uh, tanks? We, uh, like for everybody to come down and enjoy it. And, uh, well, this year we're, it's like a theme parade. Uh, we're going to have the uh, Grand Marshal and, uh, then, uh, we're going to have the troops marching. Who's the Grand Marshal? Tro troops and, and people in vehicles. Who's the uh, Grand Marshal? Uh, uh, Better to be, you know, in the vehicles and stuff. Well, no, but who's going to be your grand marshal? Uh, well, Campbell County Iron Guard is one, and we've got a another one, and uh, <coughs> he's got he's got. Uh, we need to stick with him. He's got to get back with us, but he's out of town right now. Okay. And uh, but uh, we're going to be uh, throwing candy out and. Uh, Want to have other uh, organizations involved, you know, like BFW and uh, uh, several others. Uh, I talked to one, Oliver Springs, and they're going to try to make it over.
over here. And uh, like I said, we got vehicles and that. And then uh, it's going to, like I said, the main parade is going to be the Grand Marshals and then uh, it's going to be the, the, the veterans. And then. You don't have a parade? It, uh, yes, sir. I guess I put and, my brook in. Pardon? No, I think I'll let you have that brook. Got a cannon on it. Uh -huh. I'm out of cannon. Go okay. ahead. And then uh, uh, we're going to have uh, the businesses following up in any business that would like to be in it. That's well, you. Know, be the, right, yeah. the Grand Marshal and then the, uh, the veterans that fought for the right for the businesses to own their business. Now let me tell you something while you've got you on the line. Okay. Rainbow Restaurant. Down there beside it, up right front of Speed Hunt, Dip Hunt, Dip Hunt, Dip Hunt, they've got the best breakfast. they got them our 99 cent baloney biscuits, and they'll fill you up and fill you out, too. You'll like them. They're good. They, they, like, they can get you through that drive-in window, so fast. I mean, you can't, there's not a drive-in window in a fall that they can get you in and out as quick as Rainbow the Restaurant. The difference is they're working for themselves, and they try to get you finished and happy so you can go off and eat and be left alone. Rainbow Restaurant down there, you got to try them out. You're going to like them. You'll call. Get used to going in there, and you'll be able to drive by it. But if it does have trouble getting started in the morning or something, you might want to go to Napa. Right. All right, the old car don't want to crank on this cold morning, or you need some good antifreeze now. He's holding the line on antifreeze from last year. It's supposed to go up about everywhere. So you need to go down to Napa, right across from IGA, right on the corner of Old Jacksboro Pike and Jacksboro Pike. Go in there and see them. They got good prices on antifreeze. They got a complete line uh, of uh, accessories there. And if they don't have it there, they'll have it there for you uh, within just a matter of a few hours. Whatever you need from a farm all tractor park uh, to uh, a boat, maybe three Hudson. I bought parts for a boat. Right, yeah. Yeah, lawnmowers. Yeah, lawnmower parts. Making devils, whatever it is. And you don't have to go to Kentucky Avenue to get lawnmower parts. <laughs> no, you don't. Now, as you said before, Rainbow Restaurant is from Delicious. So what else is going on, Roger? Anything good? Uh, no, the uh, uh, crime watch is going excellent. You catch any criminals? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, that's good. Oh, yeah. If you just get them off the streets, maybe the rest of us won't have food with them. Well, if the, the judges would uh, keep them in jail instead of letting them go. You know, uh, I hope you have better results for them criminals than I do. Uh, you know, I had uh, two to stop down there and pick up nine aluminum wheels I had sitting out, out there in front of the building. Uh, they were seen by someone who recognized the people that were doing it. I filed a police report immediately, and they did talk with a lady that identified one of the thieves, and that was September the 20th, and I ain't heard nothing back since. Well, next week will be a month. Maybe it takes a little while yeah, to process maybe, these maybe things. Just take, maybe, maybe they're incubating that uh, Could be, yeah. uh, complaint. Yeah, that's probably what I don't believe they like you uptown. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
uh, I threw my keys away with a banana peel in them, but I finally realized what I did and, and found my keys. Oh, okay. <laughs> but my keys smell like banana. Uh, well, what it was, he found that banana out. in his pocket, and he, his keys must be in the trash. <laughs> it, uh, and we're wanting, uh, uh, we're asking all the veterans that uh, would uh, to participate, uh, bring your family, to ride your vehicles, uh, throw candy out, uh, make you a little sign what unit he was with or division. Whatever. I'll let you remember to Shrine Circus is this Saturday in Knoxville. Call a Shriner or go down to Digger's Propane Store. He can fix you up and tell you about it. Five six two five four four four. If you want to talk to him about it. Is that right? Yeah, Shriners are some good people. I tell you that right now. Yeah, they'll take care of you, young and sick. I tell you. And yeah, we got we got a little deal. With you. Be sure and watch coming up here in about two or three minutes, and it's a little deal on viral care, and we hope you'll watch it. I think it'll open your eyes a little bit about what private yeah. enterprise can do for a particular type of business, yeah. whether it's an ambulance business or whatever. If you'll take it away from government and put it in the hands of people who. Uh, motive is to make a profit and to please their customers. You'll have much better results than if you leave it in the hands of uh, the finance department down at uh, Jacksburg. Well, Talk about uh, a man named Bond. Yeah. John Bond. Bond. Yeah. John Bond. Yeah. 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 Andrew Lovencare. Yeah. Bond. Yeah. 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 Yeah.